Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're so excited to have you here for our very first guest speaker session of the day. Please help me give a warm welcome to our first speaker, Russell Stannard. Hi, Russell. Hi, good to see you. Yes, Russell is a multi-award winning educational technologist known for his work in using technology to enhance feedback, online teaching, and blended or flipped learning. So we're happy to have you here with us today, Russell. I'm really looking forward to your presentation and I hope everyone in the chat is as well. Make sure to uh, participate in the chat and leave your questions for Russell to answer at the end of the presentation in the Q&A section. Okay, Russell, whenever you're ready, you can take it away. Okay, lovely, thank you very much. Lovely to be here again, because this is the second time I'm presenting for you. And um, it's been quite interesting because I've actually been coming into quite a few of the sessions. I listened to Nick's session yesterday. Nick's a friend of mine. I thought that Nick did a, a fantastic job. And I'm going to connect to Nick's talk uh, and, and kind of go a little bit further, particularly because I know that Nick mentioned that we can use ChatGPT with voice. So I'm going to show you that in action because I do a lot with that. And, um, you know, one thing uh, I'm going to say just before we start, there's a lot going on with AI. I'm actually involved with various projects using AI and training, etc. But you can't beat a teacher. You still can't beat the teacher in the classroom. I'm currently studying Polish, which is a pretty difficult language to learn. And, um, you know, I have I do a lot of things on my own online. And I'm going to be showing you many of those today because I'm going to show you some lovely tools around AI. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, uh, but you can't beat being in a, you know, when you're in a class with a teacher, you're practicing, you're using the language, you're having experience, you're getting feedback. That is the way, whether it's online, because all my classes are online, or whether you're in a physical classroom with a teacher, um, I don't think that AI is going to take over our jobs. I really think that uh, we've still got a massive role to play. But having said that, I am going to talk about AI today. I'm going to just do a quick screen share. So I'm clicking over here I'm going to click on share my screen and then I'm going to say, right, I want to grab the entire screen. I click on here. I'm going to click on the share button and we're off to go. And I'm going to jump straight into my presentation. OK, and actually show you a tool straight away because this is um, one of the tools that I really think can is a game changer for us in terms of AI tools that are available to us and the way that we can work in language uh, learning. So the key point I'm trying to make today is the teacher's really important, the classroom's really important, the homework we set for the students is really important, but it's also really important to pick up on some of these AI tools and tools that are non-AI and help our students to make the most of their time outside the classroom. And I want to show you, I want to start with this tool because it's a really interesting one. It's free. I'm going to explain what it does. And we're going to try to connect it and think about a little bit during the presentation through lots of practical examples, how we could use this technology. Now, the one that I'm focusing on, this first one, is a text to voice tool that allows you to paste in any text and to actually have that text read out in a perfect voice so we, it will produce with a really really good voice um, whatever text you want it to now the interesting thing is a this technology is free b it works in multiple languages and um, you can even control the speed of it as well and it even offers us lots of different accents and lots of different voices so if I'm studying a language on my own and I've got some text that I want to read and I maybe want to listen to that text being read out, I can use this technology to actually um, uh, to, you know, to read the, the text out for me. Now, you don't even need to sign into this technology. So let me start by, by showing you an example. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that we could use this technology for. We could use this in the class. We could use this with our students. But my feeling is that particularly where this particular technology is really powerful is if we use it outside of the class. Now, I'm hoping that we've got audio share on here. I haven't 
chat didn't see if there was a particular button that I needed to click on. You can tell me in a minute whether or not you didn't hear the audio. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close down the text that's currently on the screen. I'm going to jump over and just grab a piece of text from my my website okay so very boring but i'm just going to grab this first little bit of this is kind of like a bit of um text about me and what i do etc then i'm going to jump back to naturalreaders.com i'm going to paste that text into naturalreaders.com and then i'm going to click here and i'm going to change the language from polish and I'm going to choose English. Now, we've actually got a number of accents here. So we've got US English, UK, Australian, Indian, and even Welsh. And if I choose English accent, I've even got various voices. So we'll choose Sonia. So what's going to happen now is that that is going to be read out to me in perfect English. Excellent uh, voice quality. Now, I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear this. As I said, if you can't, we'll come in and make sure that there might be a little button that I need to click on to make sure that the audio is being shared as long with the screen sharing. I can't remember with this particular system whether I need to do that. But let's just quickly have a look at how this works. If I click on this button, it's going to now read that text out for me in a perfect British accent. And the lady that's going to be reading now is Sonia. Let me just press the button and see. You'll see what happens. Now, one thing is I have actually set the speed to be a bit slower because I was actually using this earlier for studying Polish. I'm just going to bring it back and carry on at a slightly faster speed. I will come back and check that you're hearing this, as I said. I'm... Yep. We're not hearing it, unfortunately. So I think Okay, you're right. Have so to stop sharing. Lovely. Yep, no problem. No problem. So just jump back to this hang on time, a minute. This time, Russell, when you share your screen, yep. just select the one tab. And if you select the okay, tab, I think we should right. go okay. Here. Okay. Actually, I, okay, okay, let's just check. Maybe okay, so let me just check that again. Or is there a tab that says also share audio, also share audio tab? OK, so if I just choose the specific tab I want to work with, then it's going to it's going to share the audio as well. Yeah, let's just try that again, guys. Is that right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I click on here now, let's just try that again and let me know, Lisa, if that's working or not. I'm going to click again. So let's just try this out. So if I click here. Russell Stannard is a multi award winning educational technologist. Yes, and founder. He has more than 75,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He received awards from the British Cap. Okay, sorry that the text is about me, but it was just simple for me to grab a text and do it that way. But look at the power of that. Look at my ability to take any text from anywhere and for me to be able to listen to that text being read out in such a good accent. Now, I'm able to even mid, mid accent or mid recording switch over. I could jump, for example, to Australian English and we could choose William. And we're going to carry on now and just listen That's to a few all. more seconds. Could I just yeah. Go on. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask, could you just zoom in a little bit so we can see Okay, the no problem. So yeah, lovely. Right. Okay. There all right. we go. So what That's I've perfect. done is I've clicked here and just simply on the change button, I can choose the language. So in this case, I've chosen Australian English and I've chosen William. And again, I can just carry on now and play this and it's going to read it out now with William's accent. He received awards from the British Council Eltons, the Times Higher, and the University of Westminster for his work in the use of ICT in education. Okay, that is an absolute game changer of a technology. If you're working on your own, this really can change the way you imagine me studying Polish. I might have lists of vocabulary. I might have various, perhaps, texts that I want to read. Um, I might have some sentences that I work with. I might have accessed something from YouTube, for example, and want to uh, listen to it. I can just paste it in here and then I can actually listen to it um, being read out to me. So this really is interesting. Now, this also has a place in the classroom as well, because one of the nice things is, you know, my wife is Polish, so she's learned to speak English is, for example, she has a lot of trouble with Indian accents. So one of the reasons she has trouble with Indian accents is because she's not had enough exposure to Indian English or English with an Indian accent. So the opportunity for her, for example, to be able to listen to 
text read out with an English accent, but with an Indian speaker would be, you know, it would, would, would be really, really useful to her. OK, so I can see a lot of potential for using this both in the classroom. You could even do an activity with your students where you play a piece of text and you swap around using different accents and you ask the students, well, what accent do you think that is? So really, really powerful. If we just click over here, we've even got Welsh. There's only one Welsh voice, but just to click the last bit of this text and just listen. He received awards from the British Council Eltons, the Times High and the University of Westminster for his work in the use of ICT in education. He is especially... OK, so absolutely fantastic. Now, the other thing about this tool, and thank God for me that it does exist in multiple languages. I mean, I'm also a Spanish and a French speaker, and I have been using this a little bit in French as well. But look at all the languages it covered. And, and one of the things that I'm so glad about is that it covers Polish. So whether it be vocabulary lists, whether it be some text, whether it be a list of words that I want to practice, I can make use of Natural Reader. Now, I'm going to link Natural Reader in a minute with ChatGPT. But I just want to point out one last thing about Natural Reader, which for me is absolutely phenomenal. It is a free tool. If I click on account here and go to my usage today and I've actually been using it a little bit for studying this morning as well not that, that much today but you can see I've used up to 1,234 characters of my 4,000 so I'm actually finding this tool really useful and amazed how much access I get to the free account so a really nice tool to work with I'm just going to stop sharing a minute because I'll need to come back onto the main screen for a minute and hopefully you can see the power of that now one thing to think about of course is that we could get chat GPT for example to write a story for us and then we could put that story into naturalreaders.com and get naturalreaders.com to read it out now actually chat GPT will read the story for us as well but chat GPT doesn't offer the same number of voices so I'm going to quickly swap over I know in the talk that Nick done yesterday he talked about using voice with chat GPT but Nick concentrated yesterday on the prompts and writing them I personally find it much easier to work with chat GPT using my voice because it's much easier to give the prompts and I'm just going to show you now some examples but keep in mind that connection I, you know, I do this all the time when I'm learning Polish. I get ChatGPT to write me a story. I copy that story, paste it into Natural Readers, and then I can listen to it. And remember, you can also change the speed when you're working with Natural Readers. So if I find the text a little bit too difficult in Polish, I can slow it down. You can also, and if I get a chance, I'll show you, repeat the sentences. So if you want to you know, listen to a sentence read out and then repeat it and repeat it maybe because you want to repeat, then also Natural Readers will do that for you. So it really has been a tool that I very much i'm very impressed with let's jump over now then we're going to jump back again so we're going to do a screen share and what we do is this time is we're, we're, we'll do a specific uh window because it obviously seems to be that the audio works that way okay so i'm going to click on share uh, this isn't a technology that i'm massively familiar with so i'm just going to log in to my account. So if you haven't got a ChatGPT account, all you need to do is go to OpenAI, use your Google account to create an account. And what you notice here is that I've got a little plugin at the bottom. I'm going to show you how this plugin works. I'm going to um, just come in, lot, come in a little bit nearer. That might be too near, actually. But come in. And I'm just going to show you. Watch this. I'm just going to show you a really simple example to start with, OK? And we'll do this in English, OK, just to make it uh, really clear how effective we can work with chat gpt when we're using the um the voice tool so all i need to do is click on this voice tool and tell chat gpt what i want it to do and then um i press up the space bar to send that message so no more writing i haven't written to chat gpt for a long time so i'm just going to click on the but button and send chat gpt a message I want to practice my English and I want you to act as if you are Muhammad Ali and I'm going to ask you some questions about your boxing career and I'd like you to answer um, as if you were Muhammad Ali. Can we keep the level quite low because my English isn't that good so just give me fairly concise answers. If that's clear can you just say ready? Oh, 
Okay, right. Let me just put my first question then, yeah? Okay. Where were you born? Did you come from a big um, family? Sorry, Russell, we can't, we're not able to hear it, unfortunately. I think you're sharing the wrong tab. Right, okay, okay, this is, right, let me come back a bit. Okay, let me come back again. Okay, I th right, okay, let's come back to the, sorry about this, folks. Right, this is a bit unlucky that we, it doesn't kind of share okay, on gonna... also. <laughs> right, so we come back to screen share. I clicked on screen mm -hmm. share. I clicked on one specific tab. You wanted me to sp click on the specific tab, correct? Yep, but I All think right, when I'm... you... Yep, make sure you Go. click on the tab where you're going to be playing the audio from. Oh, that's what I did. Now I'm going to click on share. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's because I logged in. Ah, maybe it's because I logged in. Let me just try. I'm not sure. Let me just try something else then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a little bit tricky. Sorry about this, guys. Right. Oh, dear. Okay. Right. Here we come back again, and we're going to try and do a screen share again. We tr click on the screen share. Now we have to find this tab that we've opened up. So... Let's have it. I've got it. Muhammad Ali practice. Yeah. So what happened, obviously, when I logged in and then produced a new um, a new tab. Right. Lovely. OK, so let me carry on, guys. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm interviewing chat GPT as if I was Muhammad Ali. OK, so it, at the moment, it's just said, sure, um, it's answered the question. I have a brother named Rudolph and four sisters. OK, um, I'm just going to ask the next question then. So what did your brother do? Was he a boxer as well? When was your first fight? When did you have your first professional fight as a boxer? Okay, so immediately you can see the power when you're working with um, ChatGPT using your voice. It really helps you with the prompts. Just as Nick was saying yesterday, these prompts are really, really important. And obviously what I can do is really set the context and I can tell ChatGPT what I want it to write. Now, let me give you an example now of me doing this in Polish. Okay, so... OK, it's not going to be that interesting now what it's going to go. I just want to show you just the, the sort of thing that I'm often doing with ChatGPT when I'm studying in the morning. OK, so again, I'm going to click on this button here. So, sorry, I'm just yeah. going to see you again before you get going. We can't hear the response from Chat um, GPT. That's but that's OK. Hopefully uh, we can hear you talking. Maybe if you could even read out the answer. Right. OK, this is a real shame, isn't it, that this is not. I mean, the only other way I could try this is I could take the headphones out and therefore my computer is going to slightly pick it up. I don't know if you want me to try and do that um, and see if that it works. works. Russell, it generally works with Safari. I don't know if you have Safari on your computer and you want to try opening um, on Safari. But if that's not ideal going live, you could just read out the response or even if you could zoom in again so it's easy for us to see. Uh, the response. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, well, I can see the responses on the screen, but what's actually happening, just to make this clear then, every time I write or I, I speak a question into the microphone, chat GPT, and this is really interesting, is both reading back the response and saying it. Okay, so like he's just said the sentence here, I had my first professional fight on October the 29th, uh, 1960. Now, the voice is a little bit robotic. It's it's great for a conversation. Okay. And of course, you the interesting thing as well is that you can use this in multiple language. Okay, so I've used this, for example, to practice my Spanish. Okay, so having this voice tool is an absolute game changer in the way that you can work with ChatGPT. Let me demonstrate an example where, for example, it's not important, the voice now, because I just want to show you what it can do. Obviously, I'm communicating with ChatGPT in English, but I'm going to actually ask it to write for me some things in Polish. Look how quick this is. I'm just going to click on the button. I'm currently studying Polish, and I just wondered if you could write for me 10 useful words in Polish connected with the topic of football. Again, I'm going to press the button and then straight away, it's going to use those 10. It's going to write those 10 words for me. Look how quickly I can communicate with ChatGPT. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell ChatGPT to use those 10 words in a story. 
Can you write a short story in Polish using those 10 words based around um, a young boy who's interested in playing football and practices to become a professional footballer? I'd like the story in Polish uh, around level A2. Again, I press the space bar and off it goes. Now, it's right in that story for me, okay? Now, one thing that I could do if I found that that story was too difficult, and I often do this when working with ChatGPT, I can get ChatGPT to rewrite the story uh, easier. I could ask ChatGPT now to write 10 comprehension questions to go along with that story. But, of course, another thing that I could do is take that story, copy it. I'm just going to copy a little bit. OK, I'll have to keep jumping around here, guys, because of the way um, we're kind of screen sharing here. But I'm going to stop screen sharing in a minute. Come back. I'm going to re-screen share. I'm going to jump back in now to my share screen. I'm going to open up this time. We're going to open up the um, uh, the speech tool I'm going to come over to the speech tool. And, you know, this is the sort of thing that I can do. I could now just click on that. I've taken the story from ChatGPT. I paste it into here. Again, obviously, I would this time go back to choosing Polish. And I could now listen to that story, choose the voice that I want being read out in Polish to me. Now, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to hear this. Keep my fingers crossed. It's a bit little, I'm a bit unlucky using this technology. But anyway, let's just click on the button. Lata minęły, a Jakub nadal pracował ciężko. Stał się znakomitym zawodnikiem. Okay, so again, it's reading out the story. And if you notice, as it reads out the story, okay, it marks the word that it's actually focusing on. And that I find really helpful. And as, as I've said, you can slow the story down and you can repeat. You can kind of click and get Dzięki it to keep repeating. Dzięki swojemu i determinacji udało mu się zagrać w profesjonalnej lidze. So I could Stał click on that and it's going to go back again. Dzięki swojemu talentowi i determinacji udało mu się zagrać w profesjonalnej lidze. I have to say, honestly, this has been a game changer for my studies in Polish. I am continually using this technology and I find it really useful. But as you can see, what I'm often doing is I'm linking it in with other things. I'm taking text or I'm doing things in chat GPT that I'm then putting into um, working with uh with 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 um, uh, natural readers. Okay. Now let me just come back and just show you something. Now I won't need the audio this time, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay. We're just going to come back and just to have a quick look at the plugin. Now I know Nick showed you a plugin yesterday. The one that I'm using is very very similar. They're almost identical, and I'll just quickly take you through the process of getting that plugin into your system. Now one thing is as well. I've made a handout for you at the end. And in that handout, there are videos for everything that I'm going to show you today. We probably won't be able to get through everything that I'm planning on showing you, but the videos will show you exactly what to do, how to download the plugin, how to put it in. Though it's very, very easy. And the video goes through many ideas around how you can talk to chat GPT. Okay, so I'm building very much on what Nick was saying yesterday, because the prompts that Nick was pointing out, it's very true, you've got to write really accurate prompts. When you speak, it's not quite so difficult, because you can give more context. Yeah, I always start by telling chat GPT, you know, what I'm hoping to do, what I'm hoping to learn, what I hope want to practice. And then I ask it to do a specific thing. Okay, just like Nick did yesterday, and it obviously saw it work really, really well. So we're gonna, just going to come back in again to the chat GPT window and have a real close look at that plugin so that you understand the plugin that I'm using. So I'm going to click here. One good thing is this time we're not going to be sharing audio, so that won't be such a problem. I'll come back to that Muhammad Ali tab. I'll click on the share button. Now, if you just click up here on the right hand side, and I will focus in just to make this absolutely clear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to in my Google Chrome I'm going to extensions, okay? So I'm clicking on extensions, and then I'm clicking on manage extensions. And now, and I'll come in a little bit closer so you can see it, okay? A bit too close, but there it is. It's called voice control for chat GPT. All right, Nick's one yesterday, just as good. They're very similar. I'm going to just copy that, okay? Now, I could remove that. I won't do that, okay? But I could remove it, uh, okay? But you'll see it literally is just one search. So if I stop sharing, because I'm aware that I'll need to do this, okay? Jump back again, 
come back into my show and I'm just just for a minute I'm going to share the entire screen so that I can jump between one technology and the other so I'm just going to click on that one and click over here so if I open up Google Chrome now and just paste in that search and then I actually write Google Chrome okay now I'm sure that there are plugins for other browsers but here it is that is the one now what's going to happen when we click on it you'll notice and I'll come in a little bit closer so you can see it says remove from Chrome it already knows that I've downloaded it but when you go here there's going to be it's going to say to you add or download and you will literally click on that button and then it will add into your Google Chrome. It will be a plugin in your Google Chrome. And every time that you open up OpenAI, that plugin will be there. OK, so really, really powerful uh, in terms of making uh, the use of ChatGPT. And I'm only using ChatGPT 3.3. I'm, I'm just using the free tool. OK, so there you've seen uh, a couple of really interesting things uh, in terms of the way that ChatGPT and natural readers can work together. I'm going to show you. I just wanted to show you this because I thought it'd be a little bit of fun to show you this technology. Now, this one is actually something that we've been using in class. Again, there's a video for this, and I'm just going to tell you why. Um, I am going to admit this is a little bit gimmicky, but this works so well when we did a lesson that I we tried it out. As I said, I run test classes. Let me explain what this does. This technology allows me to write in a description and then click on generate and it will generate a 3D object or 3D picture that I can even move around and, and spin around based on my description. So this is really good for language practice around describing places, cities, countryside, mountains, etc. And I'm going to try this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a little description. I'm going to say, um, let's say, uh, a village in the south of Spain. There are lots of white houses and mountains in the background. OK, and I'm actually allowed to write quite a lot of text here, which is really useful. You can write up to something like about 380 characters. OK, uh, I want a castle uh, up on the mountains. And a church in the village. There are, let's spell it right, hang on, get the, okay, there are lots of flowers, but no people. There are some birds flying in the sky and one cat walking through the village. Now I can actually write even more than this if I wanted to. So we've got a castle, we've got a church. Um, the town square as a town hall. All right, let's leave it there. So let's just think this through. You know, what we did with this is that we got together with a group of students. We put them, we actually did this online, one of the tests, okay, using Zoom, and it worked fine. Um, so the, we put the students into groups. They thought of a topic. They brainstormed the vocabulary. They then wrote, obviously, they in their breakout rooms, they logged on to this technology. There's no need to sign in. It's actually saying logged on. They didn't even need to log on. You can literally use this just straight off. And then they wrote their descriptions. And then what happened was it produced an image. So I'm going to click on this generate button here. OK, so you are going to see if this actually works. I'm trying to do this live so you can see it in action. So it's going to generate an image, I'm hoping. So far, it hasn't let me down. We've used it quite a lot of times. And then what we did is we put the students back into, into, into the main room and one group screen shared their image to another group. So here's our lovely picture. Now, one thing I can do as well, I can click on this button up here called view and I can turn this off so we can actually see this in, in its full glory. Not bad. I've got my mountains. I've got my white village. I've got my trees. Uh, I'm trying to look for my cat. Sometimes it does miss things out. It's not always perfect, I must say, all right? But yeah, it's really nice, okay? And what we did, 
what we did, I oh, like this, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what we did afterwards is that we put the students into two groups and group A had to guess to group B what they'd asked for. So you might ask me questions like, did you ask for a village? Did you ask for mountains? Did you ask for trees? Did you ask for a town square? Did you ask for it to be really quiet? Did you ask for it to be a sunny day? It, did you ask for it to be a valley? So it actually produces, did you ask there to be a castle? Is there a castle? Did they put a castle up there? Or they, doesn't look like, like they did, actually. I can't see my castle. One thing I can do if I'm not happy with my picture is that I can even click on, if I click back on this view button here and click on show, then I can actually actually tell it, okay, I'm not happy with that, do a remix, okay? Or I can even come in and um, there are a couple of features I've not even tried out yet that they are, you can enhance prompt. So you'll have to look at that because I've not tried it, but basically this has just been introduced where you can actually build on the picture and ask for some more things to be added to it, okay? I noticed this just a couple of days ago, so sorry guys, I haven't had time to try it yet, but certainly the remix button we've used, OK, and one of the nice things about the remix button, if you use it, is that you could sort of do some sort of activity because you are able to um, you are able to save the images. By the way, you could do some sort of activity where you compared the old picture with the new one and talked about the differences or something like that. That isn't what we did. We did the activity that I told you where we put the students into pairs and they they asked questions about each picture. And I just loved it. It just generated a lot of speaking, a lot of vocabulary. Uh, and also it's a writing activity because they had to write out their descriptions. And it's even doing a remix now. Very different picture. Oh, I've got look, I've got my castle. Wow, in fact, they've gone castle mad. They obviously realized I wasn't happy about the fact that there wasn't uh, any castles in the image. And so this time they've done it and they've added my castles in as well. Though I must say the weather's changed a bit. Look, it's a lot cloudier. Maybe I should have put in in the description it was a lovely sunny day. Oh, we've even got a river in that one. So it's added in a few things um, that I hadn't um, suggested. Lots of potential for using this. As I said, we did it on Zoom. Then some of my teachers went off and have tried it out in class and said, Russell, yeah, it worked really well. In fact, just a simple activity that you can do at the beginning is you can present an image to them and just ask your students, right, guess what I described. OK, they could even go off and work on their own then and produce their own pictures. And then if you're screen sharing in Zoom, you could easily do that. Uh, you know, it's got some real potential, but it's a lovely technology. It worked. And that was the reason why um, I thought I'd show you that. Now, I'm going to show you one more technology. OK, really what I'm, you know, just showing you here, some of the things that are potentially, you know, potentially we could use with our students, giving you a little bit of a taster of the sorts of things that are emerging. Now, one thing just before I move on with this particular technology is that there is a similar one now called in video for video production and again i've included that in the handout at the end i decided not to bring it into today's presentation because it does tend to take a little bit longer okay but uh in video is very interesting because in a very similar way you write in a description and you click on the button and then you can even choose the amount of time and it will produce a really high quality video based on that description. Now, one of the interesting things with that in video technology is what it does is it takes lots of video footage from the Internet. That's obviously, um, you know, it's not breaking any copyright. It will be content that's royalty free and it's putting it all together to produce a video and it includes commentary. So it's very interesting, both from a teacher's point of view and from a student's point of view as well. And I've put that video or that uh, I've put that particular one into the handout as well. I'm not going to present it today. And I'll tell you why I didn't want to present it today, because when you produce the videos, it can take four or five minutes for the video to actually be produced. So you can watch that video. The interesting thing is you write in your description, you choose the type of video, you choose the length of the video, you click on the button. It's going to take five or six minutes sometimes for the video to be produced, depending how much the system's in demand but then afterwards you can go in edit the text and change 
the, the text as well. So there's lots of language learning opportunities. From the teacher's point of view, you could create content for your classes. And that's what I know a lot of the teachers who have been watching my video have already started doing. I've made a video of how to use that system. That's the one that I'm going to share with you. But also this could be used in the classroom with our students as well. OK, so a couple of kind of image tools, one's image, one's video. Haven't showed you the video one today, but it's in the handout that I'm going to give you. I'm going to shift over now to something else that's really interesting. Um, and I must make the point here. We'll take a little look at this. I must make the point here that this particular technology is in beta. OK, so it's not perfect, perfect. But this is. Again, this is going to be a technology that is making use of ChatGPT. And what this tool is really doing is that it saves you the work of right of even doing the prompts. It offers, if we click on the tools and it works in English, it offers you a whole range of activities that you can create to work with your students or and this is where I think this is powerful. This could be a technology that your students want to use to make additional exercises that they can use outside of the classroom. Now, this isn't perfect, guys. So this is one to look at and make a decision on how it works. One of the things about this technology that is very interesting, it's called twee.com, is that when you work with it, you can build up a series of activities. You can create one activity and then go to another activity and then go to another activity. So we're just going to do a couple of examples. OK, again, there's a video showing you this in more detail. I'm going to just show you a couple of kind of really simple ones. We've got lots of um, kind of activities that we can do around reading, around uh, grammar, as you notice, um, speaking activities. OK, and it's going to generate content for you. OK, so what I think I'll do, let me just look through here. As you see, all of these are different activities that it will generate. OK, so let's uh, let's have a look at something like um, create a text on a certain topic. What we got here, create A, B questions for a text with only one correct answer. Let me just demonstrate a little bit how this technology works. OK, so I'm going to click on this one here. And all I need to do is paste in a text. And then it will do the magic. It will create the questions for me. OK, so you can imagine, un unfortunately, as far as I know, this doesn't work in Polish. I have to be. I've not actually tried it. But as far as I understand, it's just basically for English. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over to take that text that we took before. Let's just grab another bit. OK, sorry that I'm using text about myself, but it's the easiest thing. There's no copyright or anything like that involved. Um, and I'm going to jump back now to this particular technology that we're looking at, which is called twee.com. Let me see where it is. There it is. OK, I'm going to paste that in. And now I'm going to click on the button here. Do the magic. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that text. It's going to analyze it. And it's going to produce the questions for me. Now, ChatGPT can do this, OK? But the nice thing here is I don't have to do any work. It does it all for me because the prompt is automated. So I've suddenly got now a series of questions related to that particular text. And handy for the student, if they're going to work on their own, is that they've also got the answers. Now, you can edit this yourself if there's any problems with it. You can copy it if you want to paste it into something else, like, for example, into Word or whatever. But what I want to make out the point now is that we can also add to this. So in other words, we can almost build up like a whole lesson plan using this technology. So, for example, I could click on, say, fill in the gaps or true or false statements. Let's see. I click on that. And what happens now is really interesting. It takes that technology. Sorry, it takes that text boring text about me and my teaching career and it allows me to just click on button words that I want to make for example part of a gap fill okay so I'm just clicking on some random ones here just to demonstrate this all right as I said this is a particularly interesting example but you'll get the idea okay and you'll see the speed that this works with now again I'm going to emphasize this technology isn't perfect it is very much in its infancy, but I've been playing around with it 
and I've noticed it's getting better, but I guess that's because ChatGPT is getting better. Better. Let's happen, have a little quick look now what happens with Do The Magic. And again, it's going to generate, I didn't click on many words, but you can see it's generated the uh, words. It's actually provided those words at the top of the screen. And then, of course, it's provided the answers. So now we've actually got two activities still based on that one original text. And this is really powerful because you could go from doing a reading to maybe doing a vocabulary activity based around that to then going on to a speaking activity. You could build up a whole series of activities all based around some core content. OK, or your students could do this as well. OK, so it's a little bit like the sorts of things that I'm doing when I'm working on my own in Polish, because in Polish and being a teacher with you know, I first started teaching in 1987, it's very well, not very easy, but quite easy for me to think of types of activities that I want to do when I'm studying on my own and getting chat GPT to produce those activities for me, especially using the voice prompts. But maybe if I'm a, an English student working on my own, it's not quite so easy. So this is quite useful because it will um, allow me to, uh, you know, it will support and help me to produce a whole series of questions. OK, so I, I don't know, I could... For example, here it's going to produce three titles or it's going to produce uh, a dialogue on the same topic. OK, I, I could click here and let's just see what's going to happen. I guess it's going to turn this into some sort of interview or something. OK, and I can even ask for it to practice some uh, specific vocabulary. I could I'd, I could highlight certain words that I want used in this dialogue that it's going to create for me. And off it goes and it creates some kind of do dialogue like a might be an interview or something like this, that. OK, so now we've suddenly got a really big and well-produced kind of lesson plan that we could copy the whole thing and use it. And then it goes on and on and on, okay? This is a beta. I like this because it, you know, it's um, it, well, it's quite interesting what it's doing. I've been quite pleased, not 100% pleased with the results, but there's some real potential here. And I'm just going to jump back and just show you a couple of interesting things that I've noticed on it that I thought, hmm, that's curious. For example, I'm just going to read this one out to you. And I actually tested this out for the um, um, this one here. You paste in a link to a YouTube video. You have to be careful. What I, I presume that it needs to work with a video where, it, where it's got access to the text. OK, but as long as you and I'll quickly show you in a minute how you do that, just in, just to, to help you um, and that you paste it in. And what it does is it produces three summaries of that video. Two of them are incorrect. One of them's correct. Now, that could be quite interesting, couldn't it? What a time saving activity that could be to use in the classroom with your students. Yeah. So they get the opportunity to watch the video and then read the summaries afterwards and decide if um, they, uh, you know, which summary is correct. You'll need to spend a bit of time with this technology because it's quite a big one. But um, let's have a quick look at if I just jump over to some video. OK. And um, in fact, one of the things let, let, let's what, what I'll just quickly show you how to make sure that your videos have got text whenever you're trying to share. Let's, if I write shopping in English, OK, into YouTube, press enter. And I think actually I kind of showed you this last year, but it's well worth going over again. What I need to do is click over to the filters here and in the filters, I just click on subtitles. And that should help me to guarantee that the videos that I'm going to be working with are, have got um, have got uh, have got got subtitles. So let's have a quick let's let's hope that is the case. I'm just going to click on one of these. OK, we've got shopping with Bob or something here. So I'm just going to copy that link at the top. OK, I'm going to jump back to this twee.com. I'm going to use this one. Now, I'm going to confess I haven't tried this in class with students yet, guys, but I was just looking through today in preparation for our lesson. I'm going to click here and paste in that log. OK. It's going to do it. OK. Let me just jump back there. Sorry, it's all right. I had to turn off the video. And it's doing it. It's actually produced for me. Now, notice one thing. It limits it to the, only the first five minutes of the video. And I'll show you another little trick, in fact, to deal with that problem as well when you're working with YouTube. But it's made three summaries. And presumably, only one of those is correct. The answer is number two is correct. 
So that could be really powerful. OK, as I said, I just think, you know, we've been me and my team, we've been, you know, looking at a whole series of, of different um, AI tools that we think we can work with. There's not masses of them. Many of them I'm disappointed with. They make amazing claims and I go on and try them out and I find them very frustrating. But those ones so far have really opened up my eyes and I thought, mm, yeah, these have got real potential. So we've looked at twee.com. We've looked at naturalreaders.com. We've looked at adding voice into chat GPT. And we've looked at that those fun ones with images and video. I know we didn't have time to look at the video one, but we've certainly talked about it. And it's in the handout that I'm going to provide to you. Now, as always, I always do this. I end up making a lovely presentation and then I never use it. Uh, it's just the kind of way, but I will need to do one thing on this presentation. So I'm just going to click on the button here. See that I even had the lovely Ellicon 2023 with my title. And I'm going to click through. And I was trying to make the point here, you know, that there are three ways to think about language learning, the lessons, the homework and the student initiated content. And that's really where we've been focusing on today. But for me, the lessons are just important. We looked at natural readers. We looked at <coughs> we didn't take a look at Google Translate, but we certainly took a look at um, YouTube and Skybox and Twee. And this is my special handout. All you need to do, guys, is and this is automated and just to make it absolutely clear there's no trick here i'm not trying to steal your data i don't i don't do anything with the email it's an automated system i don't need to steal your data i've already got 77,000 subscribers on my youtube channel if you email russell handout at gmail.com you put in subject ellie okay and big thanks to ellie for inviting me today and just tell me who you are Hi, I am blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. Automatically, you will get a handout that will go through all of the things in much more detail that I've just shown or that I've shown you today. OK, so all you need to do is automated. It's not my normal email address. This is a system that I've created. Russell handout at gmail.com. Subject Ellie. Big thanks for Ellie for asking me to come along and do a presentation today. Sorry, we had a little bit of problems with the, with the voice, but hopefully that will come across. Just say, hi, I am blah, 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 from blah, blah, blah. The handout will be automatically sent to you. It is videos from my website to show you all those different technologies that I've highlighted today. And now, hopefully, there's time for questions. So I'm going to stop sharing. I promised that I'd finish with about 10, 15 minutes to go. And so hopefully there might be some questions on any of the technologies that I've talked about and I'll be hope, do my best to answer any questions. So let's stop sharing and come back. I'll need to jump out of my presentation mode. Let me just do that yep. and get back onto here. How was my timing? Perfect. Actually, perfect for your timing. So thank you for that, because now we do have time to answer some of the questions. So let's just take a look here. We've got a couple of, of great questions in the Q&A section, and I'm just going to start with the ones right at the top. Uh, and our first question here just says, what about copyright? And I think uh, the question here that they're asking about is the issue of copyright with chat GPT, but also maybe with twee.com. Are there any copyright issues there? I mean, I'm not an expert in law, so I'm only going by through the guidance that I've had. I think we have to think about, you know, we're only using this for educational purposes where you we're, we're producing uh, this content to use in the classroom. You normally are protected when you're using these kind of things for educational purposes. I would always attribute if I was you when you're using something. So if you do, and if I, you might have noticed on some of the things today that I did as well. I, I, in fact, I didn't because I didn't use my PowerPoint slides in the end, but I do show attribution if it's required. So if I've taken the picture from somewhere, that's what you want to do. OK, so if you're making, you know, even if you're using that video tool that I suggested that's really worth having a look at when you're working with that tool, you know, you're making a video to use with your students. It's in the learning context you're fine. 
if you put that video up and put it out public, that's a different ball game altogether. That's obviously completely different. But when you're using this content in a very defined context of teaching your students, there should be no problem. You're not trying to make money from it. It's not public. It's not for commercial purposes. So I really think that you're absolutely fine in that particular case. Always show attribution. Always show, well, this was produced by ChatGPT or this was produced by Twi or this was produced by InVideo or whatever, then, then you, you know, that's something to keep about. It's a really good question. Great. Excellent. I hope that was a, a good answer for you guys. And ready for another one? Let's try another yeah, question. Go. Good. Great. Okay. I'll read this one for you. It says, how can we keep up with AI and different tools without feeling overwhelmed with all the available tools? Well, I guess certainly from a sort of British point of view, I guess that really Nick and I would be known as two people that are always trying to keep up with technologies. I think Nick's a little bit more ahead of the game than I am because he he's really, really at the cutting edge. I tend to take my time to test out the tools, try them out with my little group and then make videos to to show them. So, you know, one thing you could do is follow my website, teachertrainingvideos.com or follow my YouTube channel. I normally, if you sign up to the newsletter, I normally just send you a video every week with something. Those videos are normally 10 minutes long at the most. And I only ever try to sit, share one video a week. So I don't inundate you with videos. So that might be one way to keep up. I'm gonna say something that I help, help, hope helps a little bit as well. 90% of what we've looked at it's actually been quite disappointing. So there is, just like we've always had with the internet, loads and loads of hype. And you try these tools out and various problems uh, occur. So don't feel too overwhelmed because at the end of the day, um, what the hype says and what the reality says is two different things. In fact, when I showed you that image tool today, one of the interesting things is we tried a whole series of image tools and just didn't find them satisfactory. There are other ones emerging now. I do know of that, of course. But this one, we thought, no, that's really well. That's doing that with the 3D. It's got a bit of a wow factor. It worked well. There was a there was a learning outcome there. It was a, a real reason to. So don't feel too overwhelmed in terms of what's coming out on the on the internet because a lot of it is hype. And at the end of the day, you've got to remember if you're a good teacher and that you are making a, doing effective lessons either online or in the classroom, you can't beat that. I think I told this story last year and I'm going to remind everyone a few years back, I went to have my first Polish course and I went into class. The teacher was a magician card games coming out, activities in pairs, activities in group. We didn't use any technology. OK, but the lesson was absolutely fabulous. Of course, my teacher online, of course, we're using technology because the teacher's delivering the class online. So my Polish classes now are online. But, you know, again, she's a great teacher. She's very skilled. She knows her grammar. She can help make really good explanations. She's good at giving examples. She's great at thinking of, of useful material. That's still the most important thing. You know, yes. There's no doubt about it. AI is helping me to make more effective use of my time outside of the classroom with my teacher. But you can't be a teacher. So don't worry too much about what's happening with AI. It's just the same as happened with the Internet before. Awesome. I think that's a great answer. It's so true. It's such a great so many great tools that students can be using on their own outside to keep studying. But yeah. you can't be including your videos, including Ellie videos, which are also really yes, good. And I've been Ellie looking at some of them. <laughs> awesome. I think we've got time for one last question. Uh, and you may have, oh, actually, let me see. I was going to pull that one up, but let's try another one. How about this one? How can Chat GPT best support English teaching while addressing its limitations and ensuring effective human guidance? Yeah, well done. Lovely question. Um, one thing, um, I'll, I'll, let's, let's focus a little bit on what Chat GPT does very well. If you ask Chat GPT to produce some, a list of vocabulary around a certain topic, okay, 
that it's going to do really well. If you ask it to write a story and if you do what I do, prompt it and, and, and set the parameters and tell it what level, or even if it writes the story then just and you're not happy with the level, just tell it to rewrite the story at, at an easier level. I'm always doing that in Polish. It writes for me. It's, it's so good at Polish that it, or it tends to be better than, than, you know, it's too too high a level. And I have to say, can you rewrite that story and just make it a little bit easier, drop, the, you know, one level? It tells stories really well. It does vocabulary really well. It will use words that you've got that you want to practice and do multiple examples. So often, if I've got a few words that I want to really see used in context, I might put in a word and say, can you write four or five different sentences using this word so that I can really understand the meaning? It's going to do that brilliant, okay? It's not always going to do grammar brilliant. It does still get a little bit tricky. So generally keep away from grammar, or if you're going to do it, get it to produce any sort of grammar activities or grammar practice activities for you check it first okay i'm not so sure about that i think we've got to focus on what chat gpt does well it does storytelling really well now i saw nick yesterday touch on a couple of really clever ideas um, around for example that reading where he, he in fact writing where he was getting it to like joint tell a story you can do that really easy when you're using chat gpt if you do a voice prompt you've literally got to tell it Hi, Jack GPT. I'd like to co-write a story with you. The story is going to be about blah, blah, blah. I want to keep the level of the story to blah, blah, blah. You start and off it goes and it will write a story. Now, I tested it today before the presentation and it, it did an absolutely brilliant job. OK, and I've never I've never asked it to co-write a story with me. And that was the first time I saw that in Nick's presentation yesterday. And I can tell you now, voice prompting it, it worked absolutely perfect. OK, another thing I often do myself, which is lovely in class, is I say to chat GPT, I want you to write a story for me. Um, I want you to write two versions of the story with five differences. So it goes off and writes the first story. And I tell you what, what, what I want it to be. The one that I did in class was about, you know, an accident that taken place, a car accident. And then I got the, the, you know, the two stories had five different details. So I gave one, one story to group A, one story to group B. ChatGP did all the work for me. I know it writes stories really well, so I don't have to worry then. I can get the level right. So I can say, right, I want the level written at A1 or B2. Gave a story to A, gave a story to B, got them to read their story, got them to practice telling their story in their groups, which is really good. So A practices telling the, the story to the rest of the A group and they all get a chance to practice. Then I put them together, A and B, put them together and got them to tell their two stories to each other and to find the five differences. So why was that good? Well, because it's still putting the input in my teaching ideas. My, you know, I'm setting up the idea. Chat GPT is doing the work for me. In the past, it would have taken me ages to write those two stories out, okay? Just a little bit like um, Nick did yesterday with, that, the, with, with, the, with the three choices type of activity, okay? You've got to get the, the chat GPT voice prompt. Honestly, it is a game changer. You don't have to worry then about all the, you know, writing the um, the prompts. It really does help. You'll get it wrong occasionally. Chat GPT will do something you're not happy. Just say, no, stop. Can you do that again? This is what I want. And, and you'll get it right. OK, so use your teaching skills. Remember, that's the most important thing. That is the most important thing. What a great I love that. What a great thing to take away, right? We can use AI to do the work for us, but it's still the teachers who have to come up with those exactly. ideas. So, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Very, very cool. Okay, everyone, that's all the time that we have for our Q&A session. So if you didn't get your question answered, Russell's going to be at that presenter table. You can head over there now during our 15-minute break, and you can talk to him there. Uh, it's time for us to draw our first session winner, and we're going to be drawing. Can you show us, model our... I'm going to. Actually, do you know, I was chatting away so quickly, and I got a little bit nervous because the audio wasn't working. I didn't even think to have a drink. I really have not got water in here, and I've actually been using this since you sent it to me. So thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. So we're going to draw that name now for this wonderful Ellie water bottle. Let's take a look at who our winner is. I'll just quickly uh, pull this up on stage. And Russell, if you can read that name out for me. Okay, the winner of the guest speaker session is Theodore S. from the USA. There we go. Congratulations. So we will be in contact with you soon to organize your prize. If you didn't win this time, do not worry. There's lots of opportunities for you to win. And you can find out some of the ways to do that with, uh, by clicking on the link in the chat. We also have our leaderboard. 
Okay, so maybe let's just announce our current leaderboard uh, top three. You should be able to see that in the chat. Congratulations to those people, but don't worry, there's still time to earn more points for everybody else. And we'll be drawing a prize for a one year subscription at the end of the day for the leaderboard prizes. Oh, sorry, for a three month, six month and one year. So there's three prizes on that one. Make sure to join in the conversation online on social media. Please use our official hashtag, which is Ellicon2023 or tag us in your post. Okay, everyone, time for that 15 minute break. Make your way over to one of those tables. You can talk to Russell at the presenter table and you can talk to some of our LE team members at the other tables. Coming up next, we have guest speaker, Dr. Amin Davudi, who will be Oops, sorry, we'll be providing teachers with practical instructions on how to integrate easy to use technology into their teaching. So make sure to come back and join us in 15 minutes. We'll see you then. Bye for now. Ellie.